Oh. Okay, you have to tell me how to do this. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll call me to order. First thing, approval minutes of May 21, 2019. I move we approve the moment from May 21st, 2019. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, next, addition to the agenda, I had three. One is legislative wrap up. Second is assessor office staffing proposal. Yeah. Third is Old West Cornwall Firehouse executive session anticipated. So, are there any other additions? The West Corn we have West Cornwall on here. That's the new firehouse. We're talking about the old firehouse. Which actually is a firehouse yeah. lot. The firehouse isn't <coughs> there anymore. So, any other additions? Second to add those? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next communication. I had one from our Hammond Beach director, Marina Kachabi, who uh, reports that the Town Beach first opening day is June 20th. And there'll be sign up for swim lessons, and the town crew is reinstalling the docks tomorrow. So, oh. getting things ready for summer. Are there any other communications? Uh, public comments? Any comments from the public? Gordon, I was wondering what the status was. Uh, you said you were working with the public utility that. Has left us with such an unattractive, welcoming site. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, the new transformer. Yeah, we just heard from. We're do yeah, to do uh, Steve uh, Silver. I saw him, and he called this afternoon to say he's meeting with a landscape design person next week to take care of that. Thank we'll you. show you what the plan is. So hopefully, we'll have a plan. Uh, at our next meeting. So we did follow up on that and we did hear from Steve and Eversource this afternoon. Any other public comments? I wondered what direction you've given our uh, crew at the uh, uh, transfer station in regard to the letter uh, in the Chronicle about uh, the swap shop situation. Huh. I haven't read that letter so I haven't given them any directions. So. Well, I would, I would ask uh, that you do read that letter, and uh, since they've taken action not to not to maintain it in a way that makes it usable to sort of apparently provide a lesson to the town, I think uh, it requires, uh, I would hope, a more positive step than that. Huh. I, hadn't, I didn't know there was an issue there, so I'll read the letter and we'll work on it. Okay. Um, so, that public comments. On to our main uh, agenda. Let's see. We have uh, first thing: the Civil War Memorial, uh, a project uh, that is uh, also that I did read about in the Chronicle. Uh, was um, Spencer Macau is working as part of his eighth grade project uh, on a project of honoring the uh, uh, soldiers from Cornwall who served in the Civil War in the form of a memorial. I met with him and his parents who are relatives of uh, General John Sedgwick uh, who was killed in the Civil War who grew up and lived in Cornwall when he wasn't in the military. And uh, Spencer really is, is to be commended for taking this project on because uh, the memorials to Cornwall veterans covered the world wars and the conflict since then. 
but there's nothing for the Civil War where there's there were literally uh, probably more people served in that than any other conflict. So anyway, he's making plans and he's going to make a presentation to us probably at our next meeting. And he's working on getting a plaque together and install it at the Cedric Monument in Cornwall Hollow near where General Cedric is buried. And it looks good. His uncle uh, Jim Herbert apparently has um, the ability to make metal uh, plaques and he's working with them on doing stuff. So they're going to look at the design and hopefully have something that could be dedicated in August up there. So again, I think it's another uh, important part of Cornwall history that is uh, should be acknowledged and repeated. And again, it's a very uh, good to have someone at such an uh, young age take interest in his community and in his country's history and the sacrifices that veterans have made. So anyway, uh, what I hope to do is if we I put him in touch with some people I know that are familiar with Civil War um, events and history and uh, we're going to try to have a little um, a little uh, memorial um, up there in Cornwall Hollow in August is what we're shooting for. And maybe get some Civil War reenactors or some of the people that know a lot about <coughs> this area's role in Civil War to speak briefly and then thank him and his family for um, this idea and coming up with it. So we'll hear more about that to come, but I thought I'd let you know some good news mm -hmm. of what's going on. Uh, so stay tuned on that. Uh, next is culverts. Uh, you probably have gotten a bunch of different stuff. I met with Roger Kane several times this week. Um, and we got some, we've got a couple new ideas. One is to um, uh, Jim Vanek, who was working on one project, was alerted that one of the uh, uh, head walls on a culvert on Cream Hill Road was uh, deteriorating uh, by one of the neighboring property owners. And Roger is taking some pictures. I think I sent you something on this. Did you guys go up and take a look at that? No, I haven't. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is Cream Hill Road, uh, right above Hedgerow's Hedge Farm. There's a local brook that feeds this going into Millbrook. Here is that. Um, These are the down. This is the upstream header, and you can just see a little deterioration there, which hopefully we have a picture that shows it more graphically. Uh -oh. Well, we don't have that. But um, you, yeah. But basically, the area, the head wall, this area above the. Is that this on yes. the side? Yes. Okay. So it's a, it's basically a concrete pipe that's probably been there for uh, since the days of the WPA or whoever built these bridges up there. I'd say it's probably 1930s, but um, the. The section right above the concrete culvert is deteriorated and cracked, and the local caretaker said that the culverts begin, the headwalls begin to tip towards the brook, which is not what we want. Um, so Roger thinks it's a fairly easy repair, um, and as coincidentally, we are pouring headwalls on Lake Road. This summer, we would just make this an addition to the work that's being done on Lake Road when we go out to bid because basically the same people can either bid on it, say it's pouring concrete. Um, now, is that the Freeman people? Uh, no. This that's is, the only thing that I received. Okay. So what we have is this is the draft that Roger uh, put together. Um, which he hopes to uh, put out uh, soliciting interest um, for 
uh, two projects, Site 1, which we just talked about, and Site 2, which I think we're familiar with, which is, um, this is, Site 1 is actually the Lake Road, Site 2 is um, the Lake Road in 43. So, Joyce, can you just shoot us a couple copies of this? So basically, instead of just doing a culvert on Lake Road, he wants to, uh, we need to also repair a head wall on a culvert on Cream Hill Road this summer also. Picture. So the thought is if we go out to bid for the big project, which is replacing the whole pipe in mm -hmm. both head walls on Lake Road, that we would also put an addition, additional project on there, oh, yes. which would be repairing this. And repairing this would be two parts um, putting up a new head wall and uh, replacing as you can see instead of being a solid pipe the pipe that's in there is four feet um, it's four foot is long is this the same pipe yes okay right so well, I think this, this is the I think this is the out. That's probably the outlet section. And where this is the inlet here. I think yeah. they're both the outlet. You can outlet. see how that's all sort of. This may be the inlet. Pipe. It's the same pipe, you're saying? Yes. It's the same ones. Yeah. This actually is the. They're two different. This is two different shots because that's the that stone wall in the background is right here. Okay. I'm just and trying that's to open thank you. here. Okay. That's open. It's the same pipe, two different and then, directions. Yeah, so there's no rock. Is there's this rock there. the road right. above it? So we're looking here. Is that right. what this picture is? Yes. So okay. it's, it's down there below okay. the road. Now I got it. Okay. And this is Cream Hill? Correct. Above Hedro, just above Hedro's farm. Okay. So the he the end wall, which is what keeps the water going in the pipe instead of washing out the road, <clears throat> needs to be fixed. So there would be, t instead of one, just one replacement on Lake Road, we're also going to replace part of the end wall on Cream Hill. So he's written up these proposals, mm -hmm. and what this would do would be um, this would be sent out to people that we know have interest and have the capacity to do this type of work. Um, two projects, mandatory um, pre-meeting, and uh, 26th of June. The contractors will then go look at the sites, ask questions. We do have some preliminary engineering work for the projects. And uh, Roger's going to do an actual bid document. So what we need to do tonight is approve his draft going to send out to people to see who's interested. And we find out who's interested, then we give them bids. They come in, we tour the sites, we answer their questions. We receive bids. Um, probably, uh, <clears throat> probably in early July. Just the bid opening is July fifteenth. July fifteenth. Mm -hmm. So, again, and and we anticipate getting all this work done this construction season, which will probably be after Labor Day, is what this means with this type of schedule. And our construction season pretty much ends at the end of October, I would guess. We would, yeah. And this we have done things in November, but it. <clears throat> It's not as fun as working in October. Well, he certainly seems to have done a thorough job of presenting the problem. Right. As usual. Yeah. So with this, so I would make a, well, if somebody would make a motion to um, send out this request, invitation to bid to contractors as drafted by Roger Kane, that would be good. <laughs> make a motion that we... Uh, send out this uh, letter to the usual suspects so to, to, to contractors that would be interested, possibly bid on some of our projects in the past. I second and, that. Um, I'm not sure a list of contractors that would be capable of doing it. Right. Half a dozen, dozen people. Any more discussion? Is Do we need any kind of um, Specification. We have a pretty tight uh, set of criteria for Lake Road, right? And on Cream Hill, we're we're good with sort of re just resetting this. Yeah, wall. basically we're repairing what's there, but it would be a solid 
it would be a solid poured wall as opposed to a uh, stone wall with um, concrete and they in can between. Sit, the, the pipe is, the existing pipe is okay. Yes, it's just somewhat misaligned because of the deterioration, but he thinks it can be reused and reset. Okay. And he also felt that he is not in favor of doing the, the boring proposals came back about $10,000. He felt because we are basically repairing two existing structures that have been there for over 50, 60 years, it seems like if we replace what there is fine, what he's going to do is probably put in bigger footings for the end walls that, than it currently exists. So that's what they sit on and that's what the boring would look after, but as we're basically repairing what's there, we're not going. Like when we did Valley Road, we had to put in a bigger opening because it was an undersized culvert and we were making, putting a much bigger structure in than what was currently there. Basically what we're doing now is repairing these in kind, similar type. So he feels we do not need to do detailed geotechnical $10,000. So we're not actually doing a replacement, we're doing a repair. Correct. We're repairing with new. So. Would they end up damming it up, up above to... They probably have to divert uh, the water and handle it some way, whether it's through this channel or, or up and over, up and over, or something pumps somehow pull it on yeah. the backs on the yeah. uphill side and yeah, I guess that's part of the uh, part of the fun, right? right. Yeah, so it's part of the fun. Yeah, but this is this is pretty standard for the people we have. Um, in the business. So, any more discussion on all that? And we have applied, concurrently right now we've applied to, um, I filled out an application to the Wetlands Commission who are meeting now. Um, so we are complying with all the wetlands uh, regulations at the same time. Any more? Thoughts, discussions, it will be a busy construction season. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is it possible this was done in 55 also? Possible. Possible. Hard to tell. It, it looks older than that to me, but yeah. I wasn't here. So. No, I, I... Could have been. So then, um, so next we have West Cornwall Firehouse. As we know, we've been uh, working on that. We've been trying to get bids to do the work. The work is peculiar in that it's mostly plumbing, but there is some. Um, carpentry, painting, electrical work to go with it. We haven't been able to um, get bids out of some of the local uh, plumbers and contractors, so we went a separate, a different route of asking a local builder who has experience in this type of work to uh, submit us a uh, bid to do a project management. Uh, type approach to this and this is again a, something that needs to be done um, this construction season so we did receive a um, proposal from um, Jim Terrell who is on the short list of the building committee of people someone who could do this in a fairly short time and we've gotten a proposal from him that our architect Lisa Keskinen feels is um, solid and should be acceptable and workable um, and his proposal is to um, get us a price for doing all the various components of this and then charge um, this on the price he gets from the subcontractors plus the materials with an addition of 12% for profit um, 
and he'll coordinate the construction schedule with the fire and ambulance chief for the goal of keeping the building functioning during construction and having all the systems work without a uh, disrupt disruption to the facility and uh, get the project completed in the late fall by hopefully October 1st. So this seems to be a good resolution to the problem and he's going to get us a firm proposal as far as what the price would be um, at our next meeting. So I'd make a motion that we proceed uh, with this uh, proposal and again if, if the number is too high or if we have questions we can reject the proposal at our next meeting but we do need to get the work done um, this season. <clears throat> I'll second if that was a motion. That's a motion. Yeah, to accept this proposal. So his proposal, whatever he comes back with, right, is going to be to cover everything that's been recommended that we be doing yeah, now but, mm -hmm. at the West Cornwall Firehouse. Correct. Good. Yes. Okay. And again, using. Yeah. See, the problem is that it's not just like we're replacing the furnace. There's a bunch of electrical work. There's a bunch of painting work. And it's, yeah, it was a whole series. It's of, a whole series of interrelated things, yeah. which then it's not like we're doing something here. We have to get the building up and operational at the yeah. same time. So it's more than I feel I can oversee or do mm -hmm. well, and we want it done at a high level. So I think this is the best. And he's uh, local. And he's local, and he'll use local people in mm -hmm. his work. So, and again, it gives him an incentive to do it instead of. A, We've had a hard time getting people to bid, not knowing they're going to get the work. So you have to have some assurance that you're yeah. going to go through all this work of getting the prices, that you're going to get work at the end of the thing. And I think that's um, a reasonable proposal. I think everybody's more comfortable giving you a price, knowing they're going to get the yes, right. It's a it's a very tight labor market right now. And I mean, as long as it comes comes back within some level of what we right. or some range of we have some estimates and we have people we and so that'll be back before our, by our next meeting right yeah so we can then the overall project say yay or yeah. nay right good yeah I like that okay any more discussion on the new West Cornwall Firehouse okay all those in favor aye, aye. Um, next the West Cornwall uh, Water and sewer study. Uh, we've had a good trip down to Saybrook on May 22nd. I would encourage people to watch the video of our outing. Uh, we covered a lot of ground, saw some sites and some systems, um, and we've had uh, very good tour guides there. Uh, we have scheduled a meeting, public information meeting for uh, the 28th of uh, June and I've asked Steve McDonald to do an executive summary or a some sort of presentation one page two page um, just summarizing the project from where we started what the need is where we're at to date um, so he's working on that for the uh, study group to look at at its next meeting uh, I did uh, talk to Pearlie about what would be appropriate for a town meeting. We have uh, this draft, which he has uh, approved, mm -hmm. which we can sign tonight. We don't have mm -hmm. to sign tonight, uh, but I thought at least that focuses our discussion on what is the next step and what will be at the town meeting. Again, knowing that we have to... Uh, be thinking six weeks ahead or whatever period of time ahead of a town meeting because we want to get the word out through the chronicle um, of what we're actually talking about. There's plenty to talk about, but again, uh, focusing in on the next actual sensible step, uh, this call would accomplish two things. It would uh, authorize an expenditure uh, for the necessary engineering and construction work to apply for grants um, for a community septic system and it also would uh, uh, talk and uh, 
prove continuing the work of the study group. So those sort of the two things that we've talked about being a necessary first step as we um, at this time. One question. Sure. The uh, West Cornwall Sewer Study Meeting, which is scheduled at CCS on June 28th, is that at 7.30? I, I didn't know the time. Uh, I think you guys talked about 7. But I think we talked think 7. 7, okay. Yeah. What's Thank you. The, what's in the Chronicle? Pretty sure we put everything at 7, thinking that both of these meetings would probably could be well attended and probably have something. Yes, when the meeting okay. you did 7.30. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, the town that's meeting at 7.30. Right. That's why I was con well, getting also confused here. We could also change this. You could, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> this is... Yeah. Um, but again, we, I just wanted to do a draft that we have out here. So I think the Chronicle goes... To, um, you know, gets finalized before our next, our next meeting. meeting or in that neighborhood. Right, right. So what you thought? Seven, seven thirty. Seven thirty is your standard time for right. people's minds. Uh huh. Seven gives you more time to talk to. Yeah. It's it's light out so late. You know, it'd be hard to get people to come in by seven. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that, that's. Well, if they're weekenders and driving up, seven thirty is an easier time to get to the school. Right. Right. And they're both at the school. Both at the school. We've secured the school, school for those two times. CCS graduation is nine days before or whatever. It's it's May. It's June seventeenth at six o'clock. So the school will be out of session. So I think we should choose a time and stick to it. Right. Okay. I'm for seven thirty. Okay. So that would be consistent with this. Do you want to sign this at this point, or do you want to wait till our next I've meeting? I've already signed one copy. Okay, well that's <laughs> no, I, good I, to be. I, I think we should sign it and just right. and just be. Uh, I mean, is there any reason we shouldn't sign no, it? No, I mean I think Pearlie's <laughs> is... gone over this. He's worded town meeting calls for over thirty years, and I think it meets the legal requirements of what we need. And it does doing. appear to be what and, we're trying to do. Right, so and I, also the board of finance is meeting this month, so it gets us out ahead of this, and this is what we're talking about. We're not, we don't have a particular site nailed down yet. We're not talking about spending four or six million dollars. We're taking, we're really debating. We'll talk about all those things in June, but what we're really talking about at the town meeting is, are the next two steps. Uh, authorizing expenditure of money right. to, to do the necessary work to apply for grants. Right. That's really the yeah. the essence of what the town meeting is mm -hmm. about, authorizing right. the expenditure of funds. And keeping, and, you know, authorizing or endorsing the work of the study group. And Is that the correct uh, nomenclature for the group? That's their official name. That's their official name. Well, he wrote it. So. Well, well, we I had know, to tell him what it was. He said, what's that called? Yeah. Right. Okay, so then... Is there a motion then to send this, um, to call this town meeting? I'll um, make a motion to call the town, well, we, to, to call the, the town meeting upon the recommendation of the Board of Finance. And the selectmen. And the selectmen. And to recommend, yeah, and to recommend this to the town. Well, this, this specific town yeah. meeting of, of July 26th, it's 7.30 at Cornwall Consolidated School uh, for the purpose of authorizing the expenditure of $10,000 for engineering and consulting work necessary to apply for grants for the community sewer system in West Cornwall so as to continue the work of the West Cornwall Water Septic Study Group. I second. Any more discussion? <clears throat> One other thing came up about this was it's interesting to people, not everybody knew that people that are not taxpayers who are not electors of the town are eligible to vote in these type of town meetings that are not elections that if you are a taxpayer and you are assessed if you're a landowner if you're a landowner or a car owner i think the thing is you have to have a thousand dollars worth of property on the tax rolls oh. in order to do that so basically most taxpayers are eligible to 
Um, to vote unless you have a car like mine, which is how worth a thousand dollars. How much is a horse valued at? Horse, horses are exempt. So anyway, most basically most <laughs> people that are taxed, but it's, what's important is also some taxes are owned by one person and not the other. So just because you have a house here and that's it's in your name, you're not eligible to vote. So you have to be a taxpayer on the grand list, which uh -huh. makes it, but it's an important point just to let people know they are mm -hmm. eligible to vote. So if their car is here, then they might be able to. <laughs> if their car is here, again, yeah. They're if they, yeah. Okay. But it's through your car. So here. we assign this copy. Right. Is, is there so an official of, copy, or is this? Is, that's a good copy. Okay. Right. So. Is there a return on town meetings? Making this packet of things. Here's the return of notice. Return. Thank you, Joyce, for. Doing all the paperwork. So all the paper then? All the paper, aye. 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 I like this. We're signing in reverse order on the list there. That's good. <laughs> it's going up. It's going up. That's right. What can I tell you? No, no, it's perfect. Okay. So again, um, public information meeting on June 28th and a town meeting on July 26th. And a sewer study group meeting next Tuesday, five o'clock at town hall. Okay, anything else on that? Um, next is uh, Bradford Road, uh, Postal issues. I have received uh, requests from all the residents of Bradford Road to switch to the West Cornwall uh, post zip code address. Mm -hmm. So their Cornwall addresses will actually have Cornwall zip codes. Um, and I've taken those to um, Mariah Benetti, who is the post. Uh, post agent at West Cornwall and she has um, taken them to her supervisor and it's working its way up the chain so anyway hopefully we'll have some we don't have an answer yet we don't have an answer yet I think they have to talk to Falls Village but as it's sort of a dead-end road and a very short thing it's not a major it shouldn't be a major disruption well, Either. do we deliver, does West Cornwall deliver along Cornwall Hollow Road? Yes. Or, is it, or does it Falls stops Village at Lake, come in well, there? Well, Falls Village does Route 43 between Lake Road oh. and 63. They do that so whole little triangle. So this is off of that. That's yeah, that, that that's whole little triangle. Park. Fox Road? They do. I don't think they do Fox Road. I think Fox Road is still West Cornwall. West Cornwall. So, okay. and they would still have a triangle going down Hot Boy Hill. Yeah. Probert Place would still be Falls Village. And the so Hot Boy Hill is still Falls, Falls Village? Falls Village, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So, until they petition or whatever. So, anyway, at least we're starting with this part. So that's, will be... Um, so this is in the works, its way but up not the chain. approved yet. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, I'm sure it takes a little bit of a a little bit of a <clears throat> procedure to get oh, such things happening. Months. Yeah. Of uh, something that we have talked about is a July um, cell coverage, internet, fiber optic. Mm -hmm. Broadband, yeah, radio frequency, uh, mobile coverage, uh, meeting, informal, um, mm -hmm. not super technical, um, but just what's out there, what's possible, what's people's concerns about coverage, about radiation, about what's between broadband and fiber optic. Uh -huh. um, mobile coverage, 5G, 4G, you name it. So anyway, there's a lot of interest in improving coverage, 
uh, and a lot of uh, different approaches. So I did ask uh, Jocelyn Ayer, who is their COGS uh, Community and Economic Development Director um, about the idea. Um, and this is her response. Uh, she would be happy to participate in or help get speakers for, to a forum. Uh, fiber broadband in July. Uh, below is Kim Maxwell's phone number. He will be back from the West Coast soon, and I think he would be a good speaker for your July forum. He could speak on both regional effort and the Norfolk effort. Dan Reese could come too, who is also hired by the COG to work on these issues. Uh, give me a call if you want to talk about it more. So, um, so that's interesting. I, we also have interest from Cornell residents talk about RF, but again, we have a couple of different speakers there, and I think could represent different parts of the spectrum on this. And so I think our main thing is get out the calendar. Let's have a couple possible dates. Find out when Kim and Jocelyn and Dan and whoever else can come and uh, obviously we don't I don't think we want to do it the same week as our our sewer informational no. meeting uh, so July, I would think July 4th gets in there too. July 4th so sometime after the 4th and probably the second week something like that well are you looking at a Friday night Again, that's open for discussion whether you want to do a weekday. Because this year the 4th is on a Thursday. So the right. following week, the Friday would be the 12th. Yeah. So, oh. I'm I mean, I'm willing to go in the week. I'm willing to go on, I am too, on a Friday. So to stay away from the weekends. I don't know. That, but I was just throwing that out. Could go on a Thursday. Any thoughts? We're here all week. Yeah. So we could do it just on a Thursday or something night. Just The Thursday would be the 11th? That's yeah. the week after the 4th? Yeah. I think, it's, I think it's important, and I think we'll have a good crowd come out for that. Right. So... Would we do it here at the town hall, or would you go back to the school? Or the library? This is bigger than the library. Library's easier to hear. Yeah. Um, then maybe this would be the best choice. Yeah. The, so let's, I'll meeting, find out what, yeah. The meeting room at the school has. Yeah. It's pretty good acoustics too. Right. This room does have, or maybe if somebody had a speaker, or right. had a microphone. So I'll try to get some dates mid July. Because that again would be good to get into the Chronicle. Correct. If we could get that determined before right. June 15th. Right. Yeah. So again, I'll try to get some dates. Um, okay. Thursday or Friday night, some people might say, some of the speakers might be coming. So the they rum, might. The rummage sale? Rummage. Oh, the rummage oh, sale. Yeah, when is that? Yeah, we're getting oh, we, close to the rummage sale. We got the theater camps. Sale. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. It's got to be in there somewhere. I think it's the next weekend after that, which means this will all be Hold on. permission. Well. Mm -hmm. So the rummage in there, 16 through 20. Yeah, that, that means the town hall will already be occupied right. by then getting ready for it. Rummage sale. Yeah. Rummage sale. You've got a whole week of it. You bet. So it's, it's really Yeah, so we can go like the 11th or 12th, depending on speaker uh. availability. How about that? I mean, do you think yeah. Yeah. they'd be ahead of the rumor sale? That would be just ahead. ahead of it. Yeah. yeah, they won't start filling it up till down here. Right. We can have some specials during the admission <laughs> meeting. Yeah. The okay. Pre-sale. Pre okay, so we'll try 11th or 12th. Yep. Depending on what the speaker availability is. Yep. Okay, so let's just say we'll call a meeting 11th to 12th, depending on what the speaker's preferences. Okay. Because these people are paid, good. being paid a lot to come out here to answer our questions, so might as well make it convenient right. to them. So that's still to be determined. To be determined. OK. 
Okay, uh, signing the rate bill. Uh, after the town meeting and after the action of the Board of Finance, even though the Board of Finance meets and sets the mill rate, we have to meet and say that they met and set the mill rate. So it's good and to accept it. And accept it, right. So, and then the tax bills can go out. So the good news is that the mill rate will be going up one half of a percent, which is good news. Very, is, is good news. Yes. Um, next is Marie Baum Scholarship. As we've said before, um, the scholarship ran out of earnings, so we are at this point in limbo until we figure out a way to increase the earnings, or we don't have any money basically because it was given to us to spend the earnings. The earnings have been spent at five hundred dollars a year, and for how many years, Joyce? It's got to be fifteen, something like that. At least, yeah, yeah. The 90s yeah. Right. So, unfortunately, the interest rates have gone down, and with that, the earnings have gone down. So, we need to find a way to either re get more money for the scholarship, or, um, but at this point, we can't award a scholarship. So, I thought it was important just to tell the potential applicants that it's on hold until we get more funds for that. For that, there's just been no awards for this year. Right. Yeah. Because of lack of funds. Right. Okay, any other thoughts on that? No. Uh, Torrent Area Health uh, needs a representative. Uh, Tommy Giuliano, who used to be a Cornell resident, but unfortunately had to move to Torrington, uh, has resigned as our resident representative, as he's now a resident of Torrington. So, if you know people that are interested, we will try to get something going in the next month or so for that. So where do we advertise that? We, oh, we could put somebody? that. In, we could put that in, again in the Chronicle. Good, because I think it'd be nice to have somebody volunteer that wants to do it. Right. Okay. Uh, day road extension. Uh, we've been working on that road. Very small town road. Uh, in the south uh, part of town, southeast corner. Uh, there's a family there that has uh, owns a lot and could have access off Pritchard Road or Day Road. Day Road would be much less expensive and environmentally uh, less impact than going off Pritchard Road. So they've agreed if we extend the road uh, 60 feet from its current end then they would be satisfied as that being their approach to their town. There's an ancient uh, foundation there and an old stream crossing in that area and there is a approval from planning and zoning from the 1970s that allow that part of the old roadbed to be used. So um, now, can our highway department do that? Yes, it's fairly minor oh. amount of work, and I went up there with the foreman and Karen Nelson, who's here, our Inland Wetlands official, and we've pulled together a proposal for the Inland Wetlands Commission, and Jim did not, as we have a gravel bank, it's basically, we're not going to pave it, it's just going to be a gravel addition to it at this point, we're talking 60 feet. Should not take us a lot of time to do it. Um, turnaround? A turnaround actually will be, here's there's the current end, which has a turnaround, and we'd be going 60 feet past the current end, so they just back up and use the current turnaround and go back out. This is paved to that area, so we plow in and back out. Is there enough, is there a way to, a space to pile up the snow? Yeah. Is the driveway going to come off a of side? It would become like that. Right. So there's actually no turnaround at that there's extension? There's no turnaround. It's basically be that part of the driveway. Boom. 
Are they going to put in a driveway to their lot, the owners of this lot? I don't know. I assume they might do a stream crossing, or maybe they'll sell it and let the next person deal with that. Karen, do you have anything to share with us from... Um, the commission discussed it. We accepted the application, and we're having a site walk next week, week and a half. Okay. And it's five, and we'll um, convene the commission out on the site, and, and then they'll approve it. They'll make a decision in July on it, because it does involve some activities within wetlands. So, um, we discussed all the options, including Pritchard Road. Everybody's welcome to go up to Pritchard Road and see what that means, what you've done. But so we have an application that's moving forward, accepted and moving forward to that. Okay. So what so we're creating is access to this You're property. Right. Yes. That's which it. which Just which access. the town agreed to do when they subdivided it. Yep. Thirty-five years ago, forty okay. years ago. So, so just fulfilling an old an old obligation, old and obligation. the people are paying taxes on it since that time, but they don't have clear access okay. on either end. So, and it's a beautiful little lot there. Has an old foundation, has a nice stream that could be easily crossed with not much impact. Um, you can see where they actually brought fill in in the old days to make this, and mm -hmm. the stream, the end walls of that long gone bridge are still in place so wow. they built it was well built at the time mm. Mm. surviving major when do floods think, and when do you think that was from oh i i think that was probably one of the earlier dwellings 1700s 1800s yeah it shows up on the old map because this was a major what was the major road so this this joined with flat rocks road which then joined the turnpike going down Crooked Essence, right. Great Hollow Road, into Warren, to Woodbury, where the Chapag Reservoir is now. So this is this was a major old road going south before 45 came to... Well, this was going, this other one was going south. This would have been going maybe west. Yeah, where it was going east to join. A that, to, yeah, yeah. yeah, but basically all before 45 went into Warren that way. The main road into Warren was the old turnpike that went through there, at least from Cornwall. So, mm. so anyway, it's a nice spot. So anyway, we'll keep pursuing that. Um, and the timetable on that is uh, that this year's construction? This, yeah, yeah, because I think, again, this is the town crew doing it, and Jim thought in, within a couple of days they would get that. So that will happen down. soon. Yeah. yeah. Dry weather. Dry weather. <laughs> the elusive dry weather. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, cold showers? Is that what we're on tonight? <laughs> we're into cold showers. Um... So this is this is an opportunity to install two water heaters. One um, has what's the right word for a joist? It failed. failed. It failed. The one at the town office failed. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Does it there, leak? There was one here. Do we think there was the one, one here? One over there is leaking. It is leaking, so it got condemned. It got condemned by the boiler inspector. Oh. Oh. This, this is water's coming out of the. Uh... No, but it's all rusted. So it's a small leak, but it's rusted. Yeah. But does that water heater come off of the boiler, or is that a separate unit? That's an electric heater in there, isn't it? It's a little electric heater. I don't know. Is that the one that's up in the? It's the one up above, but there's that copper pipe that comes out of the wall and feeds into it. That could be the cold water. Uh, the yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't know what's the source. So the proposal for replacing that one and installing one in here. Right. So it's a thousand fifty five for over there and twelve hundred and thirty two for here. What are we looking at? So they found the remains of a water heater underneath the bathrooms here? Apparently. Really? Crawl space. Mm. Not the basement, but from that back. In there. Yeah. Two and a half gallon. I wonder why they're putting a bigger water heater here. In there, thinking that we have a tub 
the cleaning? Well, is I would say for public use in here when there's uh, an event, yeah. there could be a number of people coming. No showers. Well, what's the, they aren't the same size? There's this is one. six gallon. Yeah. yeah I was thinking one. two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. That's real small. Well, that's small. one bathroom over there. Right. This is two bathrooms over here. Oh, uh, so yeah. yeah. Right. Two and yeah. a half is pretty small. Right. They have two bathrooms and a wash tub. There we go. In this building. Mm -hmm. Correct. Wow. So, w what about the uh, on-demand ones? He considered it, but for some reason he thought for the kind of use that the smaller heater was the better, better deal. I don't know Maybe the on-demand ones are fairly expensive? I don't know what his reasoning was, but he did consider it anyway. The, uh, the supplier, the, the plumber did. Mm -hmm. Right. I think at the at the store, I had a ten gallon one, which eventually failed, <laughs> leaked, started leaking, and it was replaced by a six gallon one, and it's um, plenty. You know, we I wash a lot of things, okay. I wash equipment and stuff, and I got a. So six gallons is a lot more hot water than you think. Okay. So, with that in mind, is there a motion to approve the repair of the hot water heaters? I move we repair and replace the hot water heaters in both the back building and the stone building. Okay. I'll second that. And this price is installed. Yes. And is this... Um, uh, would this, um, what's the word I want? Is there anything in the, in the building uh, plan that Jim Terrell uh, initially brought to us that this is going to get in the way of doing something? I mean, some of this is part of what he talked about, I understand. Right, right. Um, this is pretty small stuff. So, no, I don't think it will it conflict would, with anything. Yeah, there's yeah. no. Okay, that's really the, the only issue that I would have. Okay. So, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you remember hot water in this building? Never had it. Never had it. <laughs> no, I take that back. For a short time while Rick Stone was here, we miraculously had hot water. We never understood why. And he must have some way. He's gone in there. He and crawled under there. Didn't know how he did it, but there it is. Really good. And will this this one will be in that room right. in the same location, or maybe a slightly different location? Town office one will be over there in the same location. Yeah. And this one will be where, where will this one end up in the six gallon one? Uh, underneath so there, in the little crawl space. Yeah, the crawl space or the basement. I'm not sure just where. This one says underneath. Uh, as long uh, heater is located below in the crawl space, as long as the space. Is there a space up above to put it though? I mean, it may be a lot easier to put it up above, you know, to do the same huh. thing. Yeah. It's not very big. Yeah. I would think they're the best people to determine where to put it. No, I know. But it just it, it just may be. When he comes to look at it, I, you may want to ask we'll him. We'll give him some you. options. Yeah. Okay. So next. That's exciting. There we go. Uh, next, assessor staff yeah. request. Joanne Dodge has been offered a full-time position with benefits in the town of Salisbury. Um, got a letter. Yes. So she's proposing to um, still work here on six hours on Wednesday. And Kayla Johnson, who is the assessor in Salisbury, who Barbara Bigos, our assessor, is hoping at some day will succeed her as being Cornwall assessor too. She's fully qualified and she's done some work with Barbara here and in Salisbury. Um, 
would work here for three hours on Thursday. Barbara feels that with the that this is a good proposal because it gets um, Kayla here familiar with the town on a more regular basis. The only thing it doesn't do is have somebody in the office on a more regular basis, but I did talk to Joanne and she said she can access her emails and correspondence and respond to them even when she's not physically sitting here. So we could hire, I mean the options, I mean I think this is a good proposal. If there is a bunch of people that show up on a different day and demand to see the assessor, we could still hire somebody else in to do some extra work. But I think this has some continuity of keeping Joanne there. It gives us another, gives us a path towards succeeding Barbara Bigos, who does want to retire after the next reevaluation with a young certified assessor. Last time we went through the process of trying to find a assessor, we weren't, there weren't a whole lot of certified people out there. And having somebody that's in the area familiar with the big town of Salisbury and well, I think uh, it's, I think it's, it's a great well idea. For, it's do, a great idea to have this. Kayla start to come I into town. And she's already worked here. You must have met her. Have you met her? Yes, I have. Right. And Vera is very good about wheeling in to the main office the uh, field cards, right. which most of the people who come into the assessor's office don't really need to talk with the assessor. They want to pull a right. field they card. Want, they want and we're not them. online like all the other towns in the in the county. Right. Cornwall is the only one. You can't go to vision appraisal and pull the information that you'd like to get. So So that is another that is another topic we could discuss at some point. Yeah, I don't I didn't mean to bring right. it up, but But again, that's probably a more useful move than having someone sit I would say. I would say. And I've yes. got the reasons for And not. the <laughs> fact that Vera is accommodating enough. Right. Uh, because most of us in real estate when we're looking to list a we need to have that information. And Vera's very good about when the assessor's office is closed, she's rolled those over into in front of her office. And there's a booklet so you can sign what you're taking and you can pay right there. Which is what most, most of the time what people are looking for is the exactly. field Exactly, um, that's what I'm saying, yes. Yeah. Seldom do they really need to have a dialogue with the assessor. Yeah, I think that uh, under the circumstances, uh, it's the best solution we can we can hope for, and it's a good solution. I think it's a good solution too. Okay, so is that a proposal? So, do we need to make a motion? Yeah, that'd be good to make. I a motion. would like to make the motion, based on the letter we have received from Joanne Dodge that we accept what she is proposing to work six hours on Wednesday, and Kayla Johnson can work the three hours on Tuesday. Second. Okay, I, any more discussion? I wouldn't feel so positive about it if she hadn't added that she'd already discussed it with Barbara Bigos, and Barbara's yeah. in agreement. And I talked, I left a message and Barbara called back right. to say the same. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, legislative wrap up. The legislature is moving towards its adjournment this week. Uh, there's been a lot of activity. Um, and the, one of some of the big news items is that um, the teacher pension local contribution proposal did not make it into the budget. Oh, good. That the governor and the major legislative majority have agreed. There's other ways to finance that activity. Uh, the town's funding will go down by $4,000. Basically, the only substantial funding we get from the state is $224,000 for town aid roads. We get $8,000 for education. So uh, the decrease was in LOSIP, which funds capital improvements, but at least there is a real expectation 
of that these will be firm numbers and numbers that we can count on. Last year we did not think we were going to get any state money and we wound up getting uh, our low of money, although not on the regular time. So that's one of the reasons we're able to keep the tax rate down is because now we have a better assurance of what the state revenue is going to be. So next week on Wednesday the 12th, there's going to be a legislative wrap-up from 7.30 to 1.30 at St. Clement's Castle. I'm planning to go in. Does anybody else want to go? I'd Me? like to go with you. Okay. I think that, I'd already told you that. Yeah. yeah. So right. So we'll have to leave. The, science, the program starts at 8.30, so we probably should leave here around 7. Are you driving? I can drive. I'll meet you here at 7. Okay. Good. And again, we sort of know what's going on. I don't know whether they're going to have a special. They may have special sessions on marijuana tolls, some of the other things they didn't they we didn't pass. We can decide which we want to go to. Yeah, we'll probably. Go to two different ones so we get more information. Right. No, there'll be, one, there'll be one big wrap up so and there's there's um and it should be finished by 1 30 and see where they're at and then right. at 1 30 you'll have the board of directors meeting immediately afterwards oh really yeah so it's, do those tend to last very long hopefully not and i don't i can just say bye <laughs> yep another meeting but that's the plan anyway. okay that's the plan yeah okay So we'll report back how we're doing. But I said I think having having that teacher pension issue resolved is, is good. That's very positive, I think. Okay. So next is public comments. Any public comments? Richard. Can I bring up something about the hazardous waste that was done, you know, the pickup this past week? Okay. Um, would it be possible to have the ticket next time? Be able to be accessed through uh, the website or the internet, so you don't have to come to town hall to get the ticket. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's our decision because it's a oh, regional I thing. It but, just uh, might yeah. help encourage more people to bring to do it if they can get easy access to it, so they don't have to go to town hall. But how would you do that? Can I have to know? You could do that through the Cornwall website and through you know it would be connected to you. So. You could, and then you keep records of who signs up. And then I get, how do they get the ticket from me? No, they get it. They, they print, print it out. Print it out. I'm just saying it would maybe encourage more people to. Uh, and I think they're numbered. The tickets come from COD. So. Anyway, we'll look into it and see what happens. I mean, I mean I it seems like it would encourage more people to go to the hazardous waste uh -huh. so they didn't have to come down here and get a ticket. Well, I do mail it to people who call in. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, so you they don't, don't have to come down. They do. They do. Mail. Uh, if it was easier to do it today. Right. I think they want to have some accountability as far as well, like, no, what's going on. Well, okay. Any other comments? Press? No, questions? Sure. Confusion? <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Thanks for coming. That's it. That's it. Thank so, you. Should we make a motion to go in? Yeah, it's the West Cornwall, uh, old West Cornwall firehouse lot that people are interested in buying. So we will go into executive session to discuss that after we finish painting. This is it's adjacent to the old bookstore. In between that and the new bridge, there's a little piece of land the town owns that someone has expressed an, an interest in. It has a bench on it currently, there's a bench. And has a cement pad pad where the old firehouse used to be. Directly across from the post office. It is. Mm. Slot a little higher on up. an angle. Right. It's not quite this as far left down of the bridge. as the post office. And this is the site that the town owns? Yes, and it's probably two tenths of an acre. Two tenths of an acre on a good day. Yeah. <laughs> and it's mounted it's on the backside by Mill Brook. 
Yeah, it's probably 50 feet square. And if like the that. state ever wanted to widen 128, it would not exist. Right. Because the state owns 30 foot from the center line of the road. And that's about where it would take you into the brook. Okay. All right, so next is Bill's. That's it. Right? That's it.